Hey guys, welcome back to Back Pocket Game Reviews, and today we're going to talk about a more touchy topic. So, a lot of you know that my car was stolen not too long ago, along with a firearm out of my car that was kept in a safe that was locked into the car using a steel braided cable. We talked about that a little bit, but I actually just found out during that video that a lot of you who are newer to the channel or even been here for a while didn't actually know that I owned firearms at all. So this is going to be a multi-part series and none of this is meant to force an opinion on you or force an agenda on you. This is just my insight and some things that might help clear up some of the misconception about firearms and I'm going to do this in a non-pushy manner. So none of you should feel like I am trying to push this on you and it's as simple as if you don't want to watch this video, don't watch it. I understand I will probably lose some subscribers over this because nowadays it's really hard to have a difference of opinion and for people to handle that like adults and to move on with that difference of opinion. So this video isn't going to really touch much on firearms in and of itself. This video is going to touch on why and what made me finally invest in and buy firearms. Um, for those of you who don't know, I 98% of the time have a firearm on my person. Um, I have my concealed carry license. I am a registered firearm owner. All of my firearms were bought legally at Cabela's, Vance's, or Gander Mountain before Gander Mountain went out of business. Um, nothing, nothing of mine is illegal or considered to be risky to have so to speak. We're going to we're going to touch more on the actual firearms though in another part to this. I just we're going to clear up why I purchased them first. So a while back before I we moved to this house, actually right around when I first started my YouTube channel, but before I had become so willing to interact with you guys, uh, before I became a face in front of a camera, my earliest videos were gameplay recordings with voice or reviews of games that's that's how it all started um but here we are now with me sitting in front of camera so but back around that time my wife actually wound up getting mugged in a nice area in a walmart parking lot uh, it was the walmart over off of sawmill and bethel road we used to live over by there that's actually a very nice area. It's considered to be one of the nicer areas in Columbus. Uh, a gentleman had followed her out the door who was sitting in the parking lot, or not sitting in the parking lot, but sitting in like the vestibule area where they keep the carts and everything. Uh, he pretty much watched her walk out. Then he walked past her and walked back, started yelling, give me my wallet, and started to proceed to try to grab her purse and take her to the ground. Uh, he was intoxicated. Um, he punched my wife in the back of the head repeatedly after they both went to the ground together. Uh, my wife took him to the ground. He wound up dropping his cell phone. And while all this was happening, there were people in the parking lot watching. Uh, this went on for several minutes before anyone decided to get involved, despite people watching in the parking lot. Um, which is kind of disgusting to me that if you witness something like that, you wouldn't step in on that situation. So, um, now and I, I understand me owning a firearm doesn't change that, because she doesn't. But she was very anti-firearm when we first started buying them. She didn't want them in the house because of the kids. So I shouldn't really say anti-firearm. She just wanted, she's afraid of our kids ever getting a hold of them. Now, obviously, you can take proper precautions, which we do, to make sure that that doesn't happen. So, that situation played out. They wound up catching that guy trying to get into a different state because he was on the run after mugging my wife. He was also caught on camera, on Walmart's cameras. Um, they caught him, like, a month later. Yeah. Uh, we have no idea what ever wound up happening to him. They didn't ever call us for the court date because they claimed that they didn't know we moved. 
even though they never tried to call us or anything in regards to that. And our mail was forwarded. So that's a little upsetting. <clears throat> but another issue. My wife has had her channel longer than I've had mine. About a year and a half, two years longer than I have had my channel. When she first started, she wound up with a stalker. Yes, stalker who happened to live in the same state as us. Uh, he was a pretty filthy piece of white trash that would randomly message me on Facebook Messenger. It's part of the reason why I hate Facebook Messenger. Um, and he would try to instigate problems inside of our marriage. He'd also try to say that he was going to show up at our door quite often. Because he apparently had obtained our address. Um, if you've ever dealt with a stalker, it's, it's not really fun to deal with. Um, the stuff that he would say, uh, I know we I'd caught him hacking into our computers once. I had proof that he was on our network. Um, so we went to the courts to try to get a restraining order. What I was told in the courtroom was we will send him a summons to court. If he does not respond, we cannot assign you a restraining order because he has not physically acted on these threats yet. That is what I was told. So I understand that yeah, physically acting on them is a whole different thing. But this guy was also wanted. Well, not wanted anymore, but he was on the FBI list for hacking. He had been questioned by them on numerous occasions. Um, so he's not even a good hacker because he gets caught. Way to go. Uh, he was recently arrested. And keep in mind, this is like five, six years later he gets arrested. For biting a police officer when the cop responded to him beating on his wife or girlfriend or whatever she is to him. But he bit the police officer. So he finally got arrested. Only God knows who else's life he had caused issues in or interfered in. Um, then, there, there's just, there's been so many different things that have played into this. Uh... A lot of you remember the whole EC incident with me, where he doxed me and released my personal address, even showed my house on Google Street View, and everything along those lines. Um, that might not seem like a problem to everyone, but I, I don't know if you know this, but not too long ago, a guy who works for Rooster Teeth and his girlfriend who worked for Machinima had their house broken into. The guy was infatuated with her and wanted to kill him. Uh, he wound up in a shootout with the cops and died. They hid during that time period. Thank God, because had they not of, they they didn't have firearms or anything. They would have that would have turned out very bad for him, and probably for her, just for different reasons. Um, so doxing does become an issue because you don't know who is infatuated with you or who might show up at your door or why. So that's kind of always the reason why I absolutely hate when you hear someone go, you have no need to own a firearm. Really? Because you don't know. You have no idea what my need is or why I might feel that that's the way to defend my family. But criminals will always find a way to get guns. Even if we made all guns illegal... It's going to be all the law-abiding citizens that turn their guns in. It's not going to be the individuals who are obtaining their guns through scrupulous manners, such as busting into someone's car and stealing a firearm. By the way, a lot of your gun crime is committed with stolen firearms or with black market firearms. Uh, we have a very active black market here in the U.S. Uh, a lot of that is because how easy... Things are to smuggle from the Mexican and U.S. border. Uh, and for those of you who go, oh, we'll just tighten border security, they tunnel, okay? The, literally, that's, that's not like a made-up thing. They're actually tunneling to smuggle this stuff in. So, and I don't really want to touch on too much of that. This is more just me explaining what made me want to get them. But 
it's it's hard to say what is adequate to defend your family. Sure, I know how to throw throwing knives. Guess what? Bullet still moves a lot faster than a throwing knife, and if someone comes in that door with a gun, do you think me throwing a knife is going to solve that problem? Probably not. And that's assuming that the throwing knife sticks, because you do run that risk, or with it not going in deep enough to actually do anything to stop the intruder. And not too long ago, I'd actually used this and explained why I purchased a gun to someone on Twitter because they were arguing me in this. Um, and I had stated, you know, it, I, I have a family to protect. I'm, I'm not willing to mess around with that. Um, I grew up around guns, and this is going to be a more awkward story to tell. But a girl that I used to date when I was in high school, uh, we would... We'd, get, we'd go to school together all the time, but her stepdad had caught us doing something, uh, and you, you can make your assumptions there. That's all you need to really do. Just make your assumptions. Um, and her stepdad the next day took me to the shooting range, which was one of the scariest moments of my life because, you know, I pretty much thought he was going to shoot me at this point. Um, and I was never anti-gun, I just never really felt that I had the need to own one um, until I had a family that I had to protect, whether that be my wife or my kids. And I, so I, you know, just shooting with him, um, he had some fun with letting me shoot a Magnum revolver and didn't warn me that it was going to kick a lot harder than that 9mm, which I didn't understand at the time because I was younger and I almost clean hit myself in the face with it um and there, there's I, I've been around guns my whole life it's never been a fear of mine it's never been something that I was anti um guns in the hand of someone who's not a criminal typically aren't gonna result in you getting killed um but it's it's just it's hard for you to make that decision on why you need one and no one can make that decision for you. Um, no one can make you okay with something that you aren't okay with. And I will tell you this. If you're not okay with guns and you don't feel safe around guns, don't get a gun. It's, it's that simple. I, I really couldn't be more upfront with you about that. If it's something you're not okay with, don't get one. Um, I've slowly been getting my wife more comfortable with them. She's all right with pretty much any pistols. Uh, my rifle, she still doesn't really like to shoot. Uh, she has yet to fire it. She was going to recently and then kind of decided not to at the last second. Um, and I understand where guns have an intimidation factor, and you have every right to feel that way. You should be to some degree afraid of a gun. The first thing you should do with a gun is be safe with it. Um, it's just like any other tool. If mishandled, it can hurt you. And you don't abuse tools. It's not like you're gonna go running around with the saw, playing around with the saw, because guess what? That can that can cause a lot of damage too. Um, and there there's a lot that goes into gun safety as well. If if you guys want, I can even talk about proper firearm safety and stuff along those lines with you. Um, I already have some stuff planned out on this, on this video series. We're going to talk about some firearm misconceptions is one of them. And then just to show what it is to actually get a firearm, we're going to go with my wife to buy her first firearm. And I planned on her getting her concealed carry this summer. But when I made this argument with the guy on Twitter on why I finally bought them, like what, what it was that made me buy firearms... Um, he stated to me that no one has the right to be the executioner. And I, I would agree with you for the most part. But the second you invade into my house with the intent of hurting anyone in my family, I just became your judge, jury, and executioner. I, I'm not going to hesitate in a situation where my family's life is in danger nor do I ever want them to be a victim of that type of situation. Um, if that ends up costing me my life, protecting my family, that's completely okay to me. 
That's, that's not something that I would ever regret or feel like I did something wrong in that situation. Um, if, if my wife and kids are safe, that is the most important thing in this world to me. Um, and unfortunately, the only way a home invader is going to come into your house and you're going to be able to fend them off is if you're evenly matched. It's, it, I, I don't care if you want to say you own swords. A bullet moves a hell of a lot faster than a sword. And it, I, I don't understand the arguments there. Uh, there was actually a video that I did on my gun channel where I took a stun gun. Um, and it was one of the highest rated stun guns. It's highest power you can buy. I took it, didn't even drop me to my knees. I was still standing just fine. Uh, maybe we will revisit that video with a couple of other stun guns just so you guys can see what that is and why non-lethal forms aren't always the better form. Guys, let me know what you think. If you have any questions for me and ask them down in the comments down below. Obviously, if it's going to be something I'm going to be touching on in some of the upcoming parts to this, then that will be something that I will refrain from answering until I do it in, again, one of the upcoming videos for this. Um, I really appreciate all of you guys being accepting of what's going on in my life and being able to understand that this is just my opinion. You don't have to feel differently. Um, I don't necessarily want you to feel differently. I just, this is why I own firearms. The misconception video is going to be more or less a, that way you're better knowledge. If you still hate firearms at the end of it, still hate them, but at least you'll know why. At least you'll know what the rules actually are, what the laws are. Um, because there's been a lot of misconception, and a lot of it came on the uh, poll that I'm running on YouTube, which is, you can go check the poll out, it's still up. It'll be up at least until I do the next video. So, guys, thanks for watching. I, I really appreciate all of you. If you want to follow me anywhere, you can do so down below. Everything's linked in the description box. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, Xbox, PlayStation, you name it, it's all there. Um, I appreciate you all watching. If you enjoyed the video, drop a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, you can click that subscribe button and uh, ding that little bell. If you ding the little bell, it'll actually tell you when I upload a video. So that might be helpful for you. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all soon.